So, um, Alex gave a nice uh, overview of uh, how to solve a problem on a, on a on D Wave's QPU. Uh, and nice overview of our uh, Ocean stack, o Ocean SDK. Uh, so, how to how to map application specific dom a specific application domain problem onto uh, onto um, something that we currently support, like graph mapping or constraint compilation, and then to map that onto a BQM. And then when you have a BQM, you can use some of the samplers to solve them. Uh, however, the problem Alex mentioned was uh, with uh, what if your problem is uh, too big to fit the QPU, then you need to resort to decomposition. Uh, you need to slice the problem onto a smaller problems and solve each small problem on a QPU. And DWF Hybrid is uh, is a framework we developed f to it fits in uh, in in this uh, layer of samplers. It allows you to con to construct a new sampler, which is uh, a decomposing sampler. So um, Hybrid stands for uh, actually Hybrid Asynchronous Decomposition Sample Framework. It's a minimal Pyth minimal Python framework, um, heavily uh, leverages Ocean tools, and it's built on top of Ocean tools. Um, and uh, and the actual framework is just a uh, minimal um, minimal syntactic glue uh, that binds all that together, and it allows you to to leverage quantum and classical resources because, as Alex, Alex mentioned, you sometimes want to you know, want to solve some of the problem uh, um, portions of your problem on a classical uh, or some sub problems classically and some quantum You're using a QP or some other quantum machine. Um, so you need to have a way to, to combine those easily. Uh, and since they're hybrid, basically, as you will see soon, uh, is a data flow programming model paradigm kind of uh, language. Uh, independent parts are executed concurrently. And the concept, concept of decomposition is inherent. So uh, usually, when you, when you want to use hybrid, you, want, you have a large problem. So, um, Problems are broken into pieces, and the concept of uh, probabilistic sampling or probabilistic approach uh, is embedded or uh, core to to hybrid because we use sample sets or sets of samples uh, to represent our solution. So, quick motivation: imagine you have a pseudocode for your algorithm you want to use. Uh, Experts like that. So you see, you have some taboo search over there. You have uh, decomposition based on the, based on energy impact uh, of of variables uh, at a particular sampler that you're deconstructing your problem at. Uh, then you have some loops. Then you have some sampling on a QPU, and that usually translates to a thousand plus lines of C code. Uh, specifically, this is QBSolve, and this is QBSolve's code in C. And now imagine you can uh, you can represent more or less the same algorithm. Uh, using a few lines of Python code and a few blocks which are understood, which you can tweak or you can even create your own blocks. But the point is, uh, the, the structure is, is, is visible, so the functional structure is, uh, is like this, of, of the solver. Uh, you, c you can see immediately you have, uh, you have a loop uh, which in two branches try to run taboo in parallel, it decomposes the problem based on energy impact, uh, sends that off to a QPU, the one problem, uh, combines the sub-solution sub back to um, a global sample, picks the better one. Uh, after, so by the way, this uh, red arrow here means in the racing branches, which I'll mention briefly later. The concept is once the one branch is done, it'll interrupt the other one, it'll, uh, it'll get the, the best solution from the other branch, it'll incorporate that into the final solution. So we pick the better solution here by this argument block and we'll loop until some condition is met. So uh, the idea is to visually outline the algorithm uh, for code to be easy to tweak um, because you can easily tweak parameters, you can easily tweak structure uh, and also to extend, you can create your own blocks uh, and benchmarking profiling is uh, one of the core uh, features. So we profile by default. Uh, and 
but also on the other hand, we wanted to balance simplicity with with expressiveness. So this is not as general as it could be. It's not a it, it, you cannot build a general general graph. You cannot build a TensorFlow kind of model with this uh, because we wanted to to stick to to fun functionality usually required by uh, by algorithms to be studied for decomposition. So. And we wanted to provide a, a library of such building blocks, uh, which are then understood easy and easily extendable by developers. So, quick demo. I'm not sure you can you can see the code here. I can actually I can actually run the the demo on the system, just for just for, why not? Because this is a short presentation, so it's, so uh, I might as well uh, spend some time on a on a live demo. Um, and by the way, uh, we have a higher latency here from Europe, but I can still I can still ping the system. And this Wi-Fi is not Wi-Fi is not that uh, fast either. But okay, so the the total runtime for for one fetch for one sample is uh, or one sampling is uh, 1.5 seconds, which is pretty slow. Uh, but have in, have in mind that it's uh, Wi-Fi. It's uh, Europe to to US connection, but never. So um, can you see? Yeah. Just a short piece of code. So um, this is the workflow which you saw previously, and then just before running that. Okay, actually not. It's not. I'm lying. Um, this is another one with the with a simulated annealing sub subsampler here, and not a QPU one. So I actually need to to use the QPU. Okay, I'll use this one. Ah, sorry. So now this is a little bit slower because uh, the QPU block actually uh, on this in this step where where we are actually constructing the the runnable object we. We are contacting uh, the wave and fetching a list of available solvers and picking the first one, which we'll u actually use for QPU sampling. Uh, so the workflow is defined. Uh, BQM uh, for this demo, I'll just use the simplest possible BQM you can you can imagine, uh, just a triangle with ABC nodes, uh, and it's a kind of frustrated triangle. And then, uh, based on the BQM, we will construct a state. Uh, a hybrid state, which looks, uh, it's more or less glorified dictionary. Uh, it has, uh, it contains a problem and samples, but you can put whatever you want in that state. And then you run the workflow like this, with some state. Oops. You get the feature back. Um, and it's still running, so it's sampling, it has several iterations that needs to be done to do. Uh, it's done now. We can see the result and the result is uh, is, a, is a final state which in this case you can see the energy is minus 3 and that's the the ground state actually. Um, so yeah. Back to this. Um, this is more or less that. Uh, so um, as you might, might have noticed the, the Basic block is uh, the the class is uh, is a runnable type actually, uh, which is uh, composable top down, um, as you can see from the example there. Uh, and this is the one representation. This is maybe a more readable representation of uh, of the flow which is being executed here. Uh, so we have branch tracing branches, arguments, samplers, and all that. Um, all components are runnable types. Uh, a runnable takes in a state and produces another state. It's uh, executed asynchronously. You can control uh, which executor is it run in. Uh, and also, uh, every runnable um, implements some traits, uh, and tra traits constrain uh, connectivity with other blocks and also uh, constrain uh, um, input and output states. And every runnable is profiled by default. Um, so the um, yeah, 
the, the other primitive uh, of importance is, uh, is the state, uh, which is um, something like an immu immutable mapping type wrapped in a future. Uh, it's passed between runnables. It carries whatever you need to do. You need to carry between state, uh, between runnables to solve your problem. Usually, that's a, at at minimum, that's a problem and samples, or subproblem and subsamples. Um, and uh, compliance is for the of the of the input and output states is checked uh, on runtime by each runnable. So I would uh, like to walk you through. Uh, small build up of, of that simple example that, that we just saw. Um, so one way to modify the workflow is by tweaking parameters. For example, in, in the, uh, in the first example, we, we, on each iteration, we took only first sub problem. Over here, we're saying, uh, let's do rolling decomposition of 15% of the, of the problem. And on, e on each run, uh, take, some other sub problem until you reach the 15% of the global problem. And you can control, for example, the um, convergence criteria for your looping and things like that. But then you can easily also modify the structure. You can say, uh, okay, let's not just uh, run one sub problem on each iteration, let's uh, unwind uh, as n sub problems. Uh, depending on the size of the of the problem, and by the way, the size 50 th there, that's the size of the generated subproblem, um, which will which will be then mapped onto and solved on the QPU. Um, so, for example, if you're solving this on a, I don't know a thousand variables problem, uh, on each iteration you would have like seven subproblem or something like that, and then you would run those seven subproblems. Uh, in parallel on a QPU because you see we have a map reduced here, so we would uh, run the same set of subsamples, uh, subproblems, to uh, to um, seven basically uh, parallel uh, executing QPU subsample blocks. Uh, we would reduce the results into one, and we would use that to inform and to generate a new or a next state um, in the next sample. Which will, which might be better or or not than the the one we got by the taboo solver. Uh, another extension. Let's uh, let's say um, instead of just running uh, QPU in parallel on all the subproblems at once, uh, let's uh, run some, maybe some other class, maybe some other sample, maybe sim uh, simulated kneeling, maybe um, maybe just just try with uh, random variables. Uh, random values, uh, so we might uh, escape the local minimum like that. Um, and then you, you see the subsample is defined as a parallel, parallel execution of uh, QPU, and in, in this case, random uh, subsampler um, in the workflow. And as I, as I mentioned, uh, and by the way, on the right hand side, you can see the this current structure of the QPU that Alex uh, was refraining from talking because I think it's important to understand that we are dealing with a with a finite limits. Uh, so every and this is a particularly bad yield. Uh, this is not what we have in production, but so in, in production we have more or less uh, full yield, and that means that every qubit is connected to uh, exactly six other qubits as it should be connected. You see some some connections here are missing. Uh, so this is just one of the limitations you need to deal with. Uh, but decomposition is uh, more general than that. I mean, when you're uh, trying to multiply uh, too large, too big integers, you if you cannot do it in a single cycle, uh, you need to uh, divide the problem and uh, divide and conquer, right? So. Um, QPU and uh, annealing could be thought of as a, as a, as we call it the quantum machine instruction. So one anneal cycle is actually ex execution of one uh, one instruction, and ins instruction acts on a on a problem which is a full full, full BQM, and give, gives you a set of samples. Um, 
the thing is decomposition is there's no such thing as a general decomposition you can't have one algorithm which will apply to any problem you have you will you will need to uh, tailor the decomposition algorithm to the problem you have at hand and obviously to the device compute device um, there's a paper uh, called no free lunch which talks about this um, on the other hand, there is no uh, shortage of ideas for the de decomposition, how to do it. Uh, so there are many heuristic approaches you can try. Um, and also hybrid solvers, uh, there are really many, many ideas how to, how to implement them, how to approach them. Uh, and why I'm uh, talking about this? Because uh, it's easy to construct your own runnable. Uh, you just need to extend a few methods there. And you can easily implement a new uh, control flow block that you're missing in the hybrid. You can, uh, you can implement a new decomposition strategy you might have, uh, or a new sampler, for, for that matter. Uh, and we actually would like you to do that. It's, uh, it's open, it's free. Uh, so that would be great. And by the way, here on, the, on, on this picture here we see the, the profiling thing by default so the timers and the counters that, that we have this shows the for example in this sleeper sleeper runnable we are sleeping for three <laughs> seconds and we can see that dispatch next the total execution is three seconds because that's how much it took for a uh, for racing branch of uh, taboo and sleeper to, to finish um, as, as I mentioned, contributions are very welcome. Uh, we have a list of ideas for for things that could be could be done. I mean, it's uh, idea of hybrid is in uh, early developer preview uh, state, so uh, things will be changing a lot. And not all of these are created as issues on, on GitHub repo, but they will. Especially if someone is interested tomorrow. We have the workshop, uh, so if someone wants to hack a little bit, that would be great. Uh, oh yeah, and um, you told me I'd, I need to include the developer survey. Um, we we have a survey out, which in which we are tr we are trying to to get a better feeling uh, of developer requirements for uh, for hybrid and for ocean tools. So if you feel like uh, uh, would like to contribute, uh, that would be that would be also great. And the slides are available online, so you can uh, you can see the link there. Yeah, that's it. Questions? Uh, go ahead. What is the like largest number of um, variables you could imagine to solve using this hybrid approach? Let's say in a reasonable time, let's say half an hour. Yeah. For example. Okay. So the question is, uh, what's the reasonable number of um, highest number of variables uh, a problem could have? We could tackle with uh, with this approach. So uh, actually, I'm I'm experimenting with the. Uh, Problems of size 2,000, 2,500 variables, um, and I think we can, we can with some optimizations, uh, we can go up to maybe 10,000 problems, no, 10,000 variable problems. Um, but yeah, so for now, I would say around the uh, realm of thousands of variables. But 2,000 is what you have on your on D-Wave already. Uh, a good point. <laughs> <laughs> However, that's uh, with a limited connectivity, right? Yeah. So uh, imagine you have a fully connected mm -hmm. 2,000 variables. Okay. Uh, then you need to somehow decompose it, mm -hmm. run it in uh, in sections and things like that. So that's yeah. Thank you. Okay. Ah. Go ahead. You mentioned at one point that you could uh, use different methods to escape local minima. Mm -hmm. uh, so I was just wondering if, by default, the whole strategy is it theoretically not uh, guaranteed 
uh, to give an answer which can escape local minima. So uh, the local minima problem still exists even though maybe the system is simulated on a completely quantum uh, hardware. So the local minima problem, does it still exist there or somehow it's circumvented? Mm -hmm. So the question is about uh, escaping local minima and uh, isn't that solved by, uh, by a quantum device already? Something along those lines? Uh, so the thing is, sure, if you, you can solve, if, if you can fit your problem on a QPU and you can solve it on a QPU, uh, most likely it won't, uh, you won't get a local minimum, you'll get a, some, some of the better solutions, although it's a probabilistic, so you might get some of the uh, uh, not so good solutions. However, uh, when you're decomposing a huge problem, and I mean, as Alex mentioned, we have, uh, we're working on problems of uh, size uh, hundreds, so hundreds of thousands of variables, um, and eventually, hopefully, uh, hybrid will get there. It's not quite there yet, uh, but the problem is uh, when you're decomposing and solving small problems, uh, then sure, then you need to have some uh, heuristic algorithm, optimization algorithm to to escape local local minimum, right? Because only a sub-problem is, uh, is free of that, which is solved on a, on a QPU. And you ha still have a larger problem, and when you combine sub-problems and solutions to sub-problems, uh, then you might uh, still get an optimal solution, right? So a sufficiently large system could escape this problem altogether? Yeah, exactly, yeah. Ideally, you would have a sufficiently large system, yeah. Mm. Anything else? Okay. All right, if there are no more questions, then let's thank the speaker one more time. Yeah. We had two talks about D-Wave.